Okay, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel and today what I got here is the Fury B Dragon DT160. It is the 160 millimeter FPV racer bind and fly version with FI Sky XM Plus receiver. As you can see, there's the two antennas of the receiver and I had to put some hot glue on the zip tie that came with the antenna mount it came out of the box just like this on this side however i did not need to because this side was just flapping around as you can see the um, the place they mounted the the zip tie is not very uh withy or not not thick enough for the zip tie to grab onto so this zip tie uh kind of wobbled it did not want to tie anymore but this one kind of tied itself pretty good you know how that is sometimes uh it goes on there good and sometimes it doesn't anyway uh nevertheless uh now this is a exact duplicate or it's a sibling or a bigger brother if you will to a quadcopter that I've done a review on recently, and that is the Space Wolf Fury B Space Wolf DT140. It shares all of the same components, even the motor is the same thing, and it also uh, shares the same kind of camera. Let me go ahead and bring that DT140, the Space Wolf, out, put it side by side here. Very similar looking as well. Uh, actually, the midsection plate on the 160 is actually tiny bit smaller than the dt140 if you look at it slightly different build as you can see the dt140 is a lot more thicker in height whereas the dt160 is more slim and everything is crammed up in there but just about the same components everything is identical even the transmitter and like i said even the camera and as you recall on the dt140 i was able to fly with the camera that it came with but it was very um what do you call it it, it was hard to fly it has some kind of a latency or something the field of view was not correct and this is the camera that it came with this came off of the dt160 but it is identical to the camera that i took off of the dt140 and as you can see it has that one convex lens on it uh, you are able to fly it took okay uh dvr footage from this camera but while you are flying it trust me it has some something that is going on with that camera and so did this one here and what i've done was i took it out and replaced it with a run cam micro swift and it is working fine now but i did test fly it uh, before i switched out the camera with the camera that it came with which was this one here so uh, i got some footage off of that flight so go ahead and take a look at that flight footage right now All right, so here we go. We are at that new park location and everything is looking pretty good. Yeah, you can't really tell by looking at the DVR footage that there is something wrong, but you can kind of tell that the, the field of view is not as wide. And right here, I'm going back and forth trying to determine whether or not it's the same camera. Does it have any latency? And it seems as if the latency could be at fault as well but it is very hard to pinpoint it's got to be either one of those there's something to do with the latency and there's something to do with the field of view as well maybe both if i'm not mistaken as you can see i almost yeah kind of got disoriented there and here i'm just kind of trying to fly it so once you start flying it you do get kind of used to it and you do adjust yourself to it right here. Look at that. It should be a very easy turnabout around that tree, but I almost whacked the tree that was on the side. So definitely something is not right and you are not comfortable. And I was not comfortable flying this quadcopter with this camera. So here I'm trying to still make do with what I got. And yeah, it's flyable. Like I said, you are able to fly good thing I didn't crash before I could do the review of the quadcopter and break an arm or something like that. So thank God for that. Now I'm kind of getting used to it here, getting a little bit bolder. I can see where I'm going just about. But if you notice, 
uh, especially when I'm doing a loop and stuff like that, and when you're looking at the ground upside down, you are looking at the ground a little bit longer before you hit the horizon. But with the Runcam Micro Swift, I was able to make out the horizon before you really are able to a plateau off is what I'm trying to say, I guess. And yeah, let's see if you look at it, I'm doing okay. I'm flying about okay. But I feel like I'm flying in 2D instead of 3D. Yeah, it's kind of like you got one eye closed or something like that. Look at that. When I landed too, I hit the ground a couple times. Okay, so I was not able to fly very well with the camera that it was provided with. And I've changed it over to this Runcam Micro Swift. And now it's just a fantastic of a flyer. So it is ready to fly. I've already flown it just like this out of the box. All I did was add the props on there. And the only thing that I've done was put some electric tape to hold down the motor wires. Put a little zip tie on the XT30 connector. And... That is just, oh yeah, I also put a little foam pad on the bottom, put a couple of holes or four holes so that the screws uh, don't lift up the foam and I hot glued that foam onto the plate itself. So now it's really nice. The battery is nice and secure and nice and comfy right over there. So that is just about the only thing that I've done to this quadcopter so far is to change out the camera and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and weigh this baby in before we go any further. So it is ready to fly. So zero it out. And takeoff weight without the battery is 159 grams. So that is pretty good. Anyways, let me go ahead and turn that baby off. All right. So let's go ahead and measure in the plates here. Let me go ahead and turn this on. Okay, zero it out. Let's go ahead and measure in the frame and this baby here measures in at 4.1 which is in effect uh, four millimeters in thickness and the top plate measures in at one and a half and the accompanying place on the side measures in at one and a half as well. All right, so we got a four millimeter carbon fiber X frame stretched out and it is a unibody carbon fiber frame, unlike the DT140, which is a separate unit where the arms are screwed on. I kind of like this a style of a build because if you break an arm, you can just change the arm. But if you break an arm on this one, you will need to buy the whole frame and hopefully they will um, be available to purchase the whole frame just in case you do crash. But it is significant in thickness, four millimeters. Uh, it is a solid, solid build quadcopter and it flies just fantastic. So let's go over some of the components of this DT160. Okay, so the props that it comes with, um, there's two different types of props. I put on the Gemfan 3050 uh, props, the clear ones, but it does come with these props as well. I'm not sure the um, nomenclature of these 3045s. I'm not sure what it is, but nevertheless, they do provide you with this one as well. And inside of the bat, uh, box, they do provide you with this uh, battery protector plate on for the bottom of the uh, battery where you can stick it on the bottom. And a buzzer as well if you want to put that buzzer and some um, non-slip pad for the battery. But I did put my own foam pad, like I said, and put a significant size on there. So it is very nice. Okay, the motors on this baby here are the... DT1408 3600 kV motors. Now, uh, if you look at the website, uh, they show you a photo of some different size uh, motors. I believe they are the 1506 uh, 3400 kV motors are shown in the web page. Those are not the one that it comes out of the box. It is the 1408 3600 kV motors like the one that I've got okay but uh, nevertheless the ESCs are the 4-in-1 Bialhali S 28 amp ESC same as the DT 140 35 amp burst 
D-Shot ESC is able to handle two to four S batteries. Uh, the mounting holes are 20 by 20 millimeters. Flight controller, Omnibus F4, pre-installed with Betaflight 3.3.0, built-in Betaflight OSD, supports a three to four S, and it supports S bus, PPM, DSMX receivers as well. Now the VTX uh, up on the top of the stack there is the 5.8 gigahertz, 40 channel VTX switchable, it says on the web page 0, 25, and 100 to 200 milliwatts. But this one also is sporting the Immersion RC Tram protocol. So you can go into your OSD menu with your transmitter and switch your uh, VTX channels, the frequency, and the power output as well. I got it set to 200 milliwatts. So we're gonna test it out with 200 milliwatts. And there is the dipole antenna. Uh, it came zip tied onto the top plate. I took it off because every time I remove the top plate, the antenna will dislodge from the IPX connector. Very easy to dislodge, just like the DT140. So I kind of left it loose, but I did put a zip tie to kind of hold the uh, the top of the antenna and I put a little piece of electric tape to hold that down so it kind of secures it in place. Now the camera that it comes with which is this one here is the 600 TV line CCD camera. Uh, it's got a 2.5 millimeter lens 130 degree field of view. I did not like it at all so I'm tossing this baby out. I got the Runcam Micro Swift yeah, so that is very, very nice quality camera there. Now the receiver that it came with is the FR Sky XM Plus. So that is awesome. It also has um, already the RSSI output as well. So you are able to turn on the RSSI um, values on your OSD. So that is just awesome. Okay, so I took it out for a flight test this morning. And uh, one thing though, I also reversed the props on this one as well, right out of the box. I took it out, went into BL Heli Configurator and reversed all of the motors and went into Betaflight uh, Configurator on the Config tab and uh, reversed the motor direction as well. So now it is sporting uh, reversed props. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm kind of convinced now uh, after doing it to a few of my quads and flying it about, now I'm kind of convinced that this does help out a lot. It smooths out your flight when you're going forward and when you're making those turns, it does help out a lot, I think, anyways. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of that footage that I had uh, gotten this morning out in the field. Uh, windy conditions, but this thing flew just fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so we are ready to go. Let's do a little line of sight testing with a 3S 850 milliamp battery first. Oh, yeah, I really like these uh, stretched X frames. It's got a characteristic that is really nice. I like those turns. Two got a pretty decent amount of power with the 3S. And if it is anything like the DT140, which is very similar, Should give us a pretty decent amount of flight time as well. All right, punch out. Oh yeah, that's plenty enough power with 3S. Okay, one more punch out. Holy, yeah, very nice. All right, then we got an airplane fixed wing flying on the opposite side over there. So, very nice. Okay, do some flips. 
Nice. Okay, I lost control of it. Bringing it back. 30 there we go. Nice save right there. Woo -hoo -hoo. From acro to angle mode in mid crash. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and bring it in. There we go. All right, here we go with our first FPV flight with the DT160 3S battery, 850 milliamps. Let's go and check it out. Well, it is not our first FPV flight, is it? Because I've changed the camera on it. So this is our second FPV flight, but the first FPV flight with the new camera. And oh yeah, she's so much better. I can see everything. Man, the wind is just picking up. Okay, 100 meter bush. Oh, and this thing's got a lot more distance than 100 meters for sure. Oh yeah, look at the RSSI. I can go a lot more further than that. So very, very nice with the XM Plus receiver. So far very smooth, yep, very smooth on this one, there's a little bit of static, I'm on the opposite side of the car, yep, oh yeah this thing flies like a dream, wow, just a slight bit bigger frame with the same components. And this thing's just a really, really smooth flyer now. Wow. Woohoo. Oop, missed the car. <laughs> nice. Wow, very, very smooth. Not much prop wash either. And I love the way this thing handles around the turns. And also remember I got the props reversed on this one as well. Thirty seconds. Missed the car again. Got part of the car on that one. Twenty seconds. Nice. Very, very Four, nice. Very, very nice. Two, one. Got a little bit of a battery dip right there. But other than that, this thing is just awesome. 10.7. There's my friend way over here. He's flying his fixed wing. Yep. I still got connection here, no problem. Yep, a little bit of a static there. Awesome. This is a nice flyer guys, very nice and the wind is picking up too and I don't even feel it. There we go, 10.5, we've been flying for 3 minutes, 40 seconds, so decent amount of flight time. Oh man, this is nice now with the new camera, I can see everything. There we go. I think I missed the landing pad. All right, that's our first flight with the 3S battery, FPV. 
with the DT160. All right, here we go with our second line of sight test. I have a 650 milliamp 4S on it this time around. So let's go and check that out. The FPV flight with the 3S was very promising too. Very smooth. This one. Yeah, with the 4S, I am feeling a lot more power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my Lord. This thing is uh, screaming. And it is to my understanding that they changed the motor on this baby here. Supposed to come with a 1506. And now change it to the 1408s. Oh, it's good enough for me. Jesus. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, heck yeah. The 4S is awesome. All right. We're ready for the punch out here. Holy cow. Where is it? <laughs> oh my god. Very nice. One more punch out. Ready. One. That is an awesome punch out. There you go. Side view. <laughs> All right, simply awesome. Okay, hopefully I don't end up almost crashing again. Oh yeah, a lot more definitive on the flips with the 4S. You got tons of lift on this one here. Nice. Oh, yeah, okay. Go ahead and bring it in and check it out with some FPV. I'm gonna fly it with, uh, I got another 850 milliamp this time, 4S. So we're gonna check it out with the 850 milliamp 4S for the FPV flight. All right, here we go with our second FPV flight with the 4S battery, 850 milliamp this time, same as the, the first FPV flight. So let's go and check this baby out. Holy cow, just takes off the table like bad out of hell. Whoo! All right, 4S baby. Man, this thing's got super range. Ooh, lots of turbulence up there. power oh man it just drained the battery out like crazy on that one okay let it recover a little bit there holy cow definitely got some 30 seconds oh yeah what happened to this battery 850 million and it is already showing signs of depletion one minute into the flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hang on with the last. Well, I'm going to have to change out the battery, guys. So far, man, this thing is handling everything very well. Three S, four S. 
fantastic. Awesome. Sounds real good too. Yeah, as you can see, the wind is just picking up now. I'm milking this battery out to the <laughs> last drop. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in. All right. Awesome, awesome. Well, I can't see. There we go. The wind is kind of, I think it's right around here. Anyway, that is our second FPV flight with a 4S 850 milliamp battery. And I just squeezed down three minutes with that battery. Perhaps I'm going to try another 4S battery. All right, here we go. Another FPV flight with another 4S 850 milliamp battery. Just about the same amount of wind. It hasn't picked up or anything. So we are good to go here. 100 meter bush. It's just a fantastic of a flyer, this one. Oh, I can feel that wind right there. Man, this thing flies very, very nice, guys. It's going exactly where I wanted it to go in this wind, too. Two minutes. And not much prop wash on the way down. Nice. And it came out of the box just like this. I didn't do much to it. All I did was a change of the camera because it came with that same camera that the DT140 came with. Oh, there's a bunch of static there. So, yeah, something wrong with that camera, guys. It's got a very small field of view or I don't know what it is. Can't really pinpoint it like I couldn't pinpoint it with the 140 but very difficult to fly. You really can't tell your surroundings. You're just the field of view. But this one here, oh, man, it's really, really nice. There's a little bit of oscillations there on the punch, but nothing much. Just right out of the box. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> oh, this is seconds. a very fun flyer. So the DT-140 was an excellent flyer. And I just got done doing a review on the Helifar Turtles 135 and that one was a smooth flyer. But that one, for some reason, it has a slight drift, Nine, eight, especially with the uh, seven, jumper remote. Six, five, but this one feels four. very locked in, right out of the box. Just an awesome, awesome flyer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. Another three minutes with the 850 4S. So it seems like I'm getting more flight time with the 3S battery than the 4S. Maybe it's just due to my batteries. Shouldn't you get a little bit more flight time with the 4S? With the same equivalent milliamp hour battery? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But look at how smooth this thing is. Just awesome. 
And I think uh, the reversing of the props do help a lot to smooth out the aircraft. Two minutes. It's a very nice flyer. We also got that RSSI displayed. So just a fantastic, fantastic clock out there. Let me go ahead and land it. I think the battery is starting to get depleted. So I kind of managed to squeeze out almost four minutes of flight time. There we go. I think I missed the yeah, landing pad is to the right. Anyway, there you go guys. Uh, my second flight with the Dragon DT-160. I think it's an excellent, excellent flyer right out of the box. 3S and 4S. It is a performer and not much prop wash at all. It feels very, very locked in even with the 3S and with the 4S as well. Just the fact that we have a little bit of a windy condition, but it performed very well. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.